It has been five years since the last Gears of War game was released, and Xbox just revealed the next entry, that is Gears of War E-Day, a prequel to the series. Loner JB here. Let's take a look at a few things you may have missed in all the excitement over the new trailer. Number one, the newspaper and the welcome home signs. Emergence Day, or E-Day, takes place just six weeks after the Pendulum Wars, which was fought between the Coalition of Ordered Governments, which is COG, and the Union of Independent Republics, which is the UIR. This was fought over the planet's supply of emulsion. This was a nearly 80-year war that was mostly deadlocked until the COG, which is the logo you can see on the TV, stole the plans for the Hammer of Dawn from the UIR. Adam Phoenix then used this technology to create orbital weapons, which gave COG forces the advantage. Ultimately, though, the Hammer of Dawn was used by the COG, and the majority of the UIR surrendered, hence the newspaper UIR surrendered. The welcome home sign is for Marcus, who was a sergeant in the COG army. He was given the highest military award for his actions during the Battle of Asphalt Fields, which was the last battle before the end of the Pendulum Wars. I do think it's kind of cute that they have uh, the COG as the zero in home. It's kind of fun. Number two, the Mark I Lancer Assault Rifle. This was dubbed as the Retro Lancer in the original games and was the predecessor of the iconic MK2 Chainsaw Lancer. The MK1 was used throughout the Pendulum Wars and it had a fairly low ammo capacity and an attachable bayonet, which is really cool. But this was serviceable in the war against humans and it proved to be very ineffective against the Locusts. With E-Day being a mere six weeks after the wars ended, this was really all they had. And it had just basically won them a war against UIR, so why not? The year following E-Day, Marcus and his father Adam Phoenix built the chainsaw bayonet after seeing Corporal Takaliso using a saw to kill a locust drone when his MK1 Lancer bayonet broke on the hard locust drone skin. This will be in the game at some point. There was an accompanying article to the trailer mentioning this would be there would be a lot of origin origin stories so i hope to see ty tearing up some locusts with a saw that would be pretty sick number three the rash ball coal figure oh yeah baby this train is running on time in this tussle marcus knocks off a figurine of the famous thrash ball player augustus coal train coal thrash ball is the gears of war universe version of football basically he was a defensive lineman and a two-time MVP for his Hanover Cougars. He would end up joining the COG army after his parents were killed in the attack in this attack on E-Day. He serves with Marcus and Dom in the original games, and I would imagine he makes some hefty appearances in this one. You can also see another figurine of a character wearing the Gear Soldier armor. I'm not sure if this is a Carmine brother or just a soldier, but I'm going to take it as a nod to them. War. It could be Will Carmine, who was featured in the Gears comic series. He was the uncle of all the Carmine brothers that you see in the games. He was also a vet veteran of the Pendulum Wars, and he was a big part of the Carmine family until E Day, where he would ultimately meet his demise at the hands of General Ram. Number five, the Cog Tags. These are pretty obvious to Gears fans, but they serve as a form of identification for the Gear soldiers. Much like military dog tags, they have Marcus, these in particular have Marcus's name, ID, and say property of the Coalition of Ordered Governments, making the statement that Marcus and his brothers are all just cogs in the machine. More dedicated Gears fans will know that these are the collectibles for the Gears games, starting Gears of War and going all the way to Gears 5. Surely, or at least I hope, they will return as a collectible for E-Day and add a little bit more lore to the game as well. Six. The emergence hole, aka E-holes. This is what breaks the building apart, looking down into what literally looks like the Crimson Omen, which is the logo for Gears of War. These holes are what sprung up everywhere on E-Day, causing irreparable damage. And from these holes are the subterranean tunnels that are dug by the Locust Horde that allowed the Horde to move freely underground and coordinate these massive attacks and catch the human race basically off guard. Number seven, Mad World. While the fight before this is happening, you can hear the subtle chords that lead into the song. This is Mad World, and it was originally a Tears of Fear song, but this is the Gary Jules cover of it, and it was in most of the marketing for the original Gears of War game back in 2006. This was viewed as a complete shakeup from the bombastic trailers of games around this time. 
These showed how helpless mankind was and how dark and emotional the series would become. Including it here really is a callback to the profound emotional depth of the original Gears of War commercial. The marketing of the game shook up the gaming industry and this song was a big part of it. It is also synonymous with a Gears of War character. Dominic Santiago, number 8. This hits me right in the feels as the main piano kicks in for Mad World. If you've never played Gears of War 3, stop the video and go play it. Okay, are you back? This is the song that plays when Dom heroically saves Delta Squad, but loses his life in the process. And this scene almost had me in tears. Probably the only game I ever cried at, and back in 2011 it really got me. And it got me again today. I got a little carried away there. Everyone knows who Dom is, so this is not something you missed, but E-Day is going to be how they form the bond that leads into the Gears of War games. Marcus and Dom are connected through Dom's older brother Carlos. He served with Marcus in the Pendulum Wars and was Marcus's best friend. He also died in the Battle of Icefell Fields where Marcus won his famous award. So this is going to be how Marcus and Dom form their brotherhood, over the loss of one brother and one best friend. This is how they figure those things out and how they bond through trauma and, and navigating the loss of a loved one, which will help them along the way in the Gears of War story. Dom and Marcus reported for duty when the, annex, when the attacks started on D-Day, and they were tasked with protecting the civilians of the Kelowna District that you see on the TV. That leads us to number nine, the Kelowna District. You can see this on the TV before Marcus slams it into the drone. Uh, Cologne District is one of the first and hardest hit places on D-Day. While this is location's first appearance in a game or in a comic, I believe this would put it in Jennermont, which is the very first attack on E-Day. It was attacked first by the Locust due to its large army and army base that was in the city. And this was a, a decisive victory for the Locust. Over 100,000 people would die in the initial attack. But it would inspire several to join the cargo army by using the attack in its propaganda posters. A couple bonus things here. At the end, you can see the King Raven helicopters flying over. These are pretty prominent in the Cog Army as they form, you know, the backbone of the Cog Air Corps. There's also a map featured in one of the games called Raven Down, which is pretty sick. This is one of those helicopters. And the corpses, which you can see climbing over the buildings. These are the huge spider-like creatures. They dig tunnels for the locusts and symbolize the locust emergence on E-Day. I threw in a couple more as I was recording, just because I thought they were cool. But if, if you notice I left anything out, please leave it in the comments below. I'm a pretty big Gears fan, but even I probably missed a couple things here and there. This is a different genre of game than I normally cover, but Gears of War is one of those games that really fueled gaming for me as a child. And to see it come back is awesome. We're almost at 700 subs now, so please consider subscribing. Uh, I'll cover more Gears of War E-Day news as it comes in. Thank you for joining me on this trip into E-Day. This has been Loner JB. Good night.